Oh my god, you guys have to see this. The cartels have built a weapon to surpass Metal Gear. It's like a real-life bolter. It is an open-bolt submachine gun in 50 BMG. That's right, handheld 50 caliber machine gun. This shit is so rad. Why has nobody done this before? Well, that's why we're here today. Let's talk about reality. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Yes, it is finally time to talk about that. You guys have been begging me to cover this gun since this photo recently went viral. It is an old picture, I'm pretty sure we've talked about it before, but it has exploded all over the internet and people want me to talk about it. Like, they really, really, really want me to talk about it. You guys have been tagging me in this, sending this to me at least once a day for the last few weeks, asking me to cover it. So you know what? Ask and ye shall receive. So first off, a little bit of background. What is this thing? So it's an improvised firearm that was confiscated by South American police in some sort of cartel bust. In the lot of guns that were seized, uh, many of them being homemade or improvised, was this monstrosity, which is allegedly an automatic 50 caliber submachine gun. Very hard to confirm that's actually what they said it was because it is very hard to find an official source. In fact, information about this at all is pretty scarce. Almost as scarce as the evidence that Jeffrey Epstein killed. But yeah, the whole ass internet collectively shit their pants over the idea that the cartels were able to put together a fucking Barrett-Sten hybrid that blasted anti-material rifle rounds like a handheld Ma Deuce. Now, we only have a couple of photos, but from what we can see, there's already some problems with this idea. In fact, here's my hot take. I don't think this gun works. Or at least, I don't think it's physically possible for this gun to work even remotely close to the way the internet seems to think it does. But Brandon, how could you possibly think something like that? Oh, don't worry, I've been sitting on this one for a while, so I'm gonna fucking tell you whether you like it or not, so buckle up, because I'm going in dry. And for the record, this is me saying this as somewhat of a subject matter expert. As the owner of many 50 cals, some of which are amongst the rarest ever made, I'm also the developer of my own semi-automatic 50 BMG design, which I've had the pleasure of essentially taking from a cocktail napkin to two prototypes, and currently on its third. So suffice it to say, I've learned quite a lot about weapon design and 50 cal specifically over the past few years. And that's why I believe I'm specifically qualified to tell you that this shit don't smell right. First off, what I think it possibly could be. I think it is most likely that this gun is just a bolt action with a bad translation. From what I've been able to find, there are no videos of this thing functioning. And a little weirder, there's no photos of the other side of the gun. Which means this could very easily be a bolt action and the bolt is just on the other side. This gun being a bolt action would make a lot more sense. Bolt actions are super easy to build. In fact, they've been around in some form or the other for about 200 years now. So that is definitely something that the cartels could just weld up in a chop shop. Unlike a full auto or semi-auto, you don't have to worry about anything like you know, gas, uh, springs, cycling, all sorts of crazy shit, bolt weight, anything that goes into calculating how to make an automatic weapon cycle. You just push it forward and close it. And before you tell me how wrong I am, look a little closer in this photo. There's an almost identical gun in the background where you can clearly see it has an exposed bolt cut out and bolt handle sticking out of it. So yeah, that should be case closed. But just for the sake of this video and really for shits and giggles, let's just assume that this gun is exactly what the internet thinks it is and it is an open bolt direct blowback 50 BMG submachine gun. Well, that would lead me to my first major point. You are not gonna damage anything with that short ass barrel as much as you're going to damage your fucking eardrums. I'll get into a little bit of the math on that later, but this barrel is probably far too short to get anything close to useful velocity out of 50 BMG. You see, 50 BMG is a large round. and needs a lot of barrel length to burn the powder that is in the cartridge. That's a lot of powder. You usually want at the very bare minimum about 20 inches of barrel, ideally more like 30. Judging by this photo, this barrel could be as short as seven and a half inches. Is that a lot? Depends on the context. Seven and a half inches has treated me quite well. But in the context of a 50 BMG barrel? Fuck no. Shit, the round itself is like five and a half inches, meaning that the chamber alone is like five inches of barrel. By having a barrel that's super short, you completely destroy the entire purpose of using 50 BMG in the first place, which is supposed to be used as an anti-material, anti-vehicle, frankly, anti-whatever-the-hell-you-pointed-at kind of weapon. It's like forcing Albert Einstein to drop out in the third grade. You had all that potential there, you just cut it short because, uh... And that is not even to mention the concussion that you create by burning that much powder outside of the barrel. If you've ever shot a 50 cal or been around somebody who was shooting a 50 cal, you already know how concussive it normally is. On a short barrel like that, every round you fire is basically just going to give the user a TBI on overpressure alone. 
TBI, of course, being traumatic brain injury, which you can get from being blown up too many times or standing too close to explosions. My name's Brandon Herrera. Welcome to Jackass. So yeah, TBI, or as we call it, adult shaken baby syndrome. They don't call it that. I'm calling it that now. But real quick, this video is sponsored by nobody. That's right, no sponsor this time. I just wanted to take a moment and tell you guys how much I appreciate you guys. Keep being awesome and know that I believe in you. Also, if you've been watching a lot of the channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you think you're subscribed, be sure to double check. YouTube does this weird thing where they will unsubscribe people from the channel and it's been happening a lot lately. So if you're already subscribed, be sure to go ahead and double check real quick. Make sure you're still subscribed because I would hate for you to miss out on future content. But yeah, summarizing that point quickly, you're basically neutering the cartridge while also somehow making it three times as concussive to shoot as 50 BMG already is. But the very longest this barrel could possibly be, by our guesstimate, is about 14 inches. Now, why didn't we use that number? Well, because that's actually awful for this gun's odds of not exploding, which leads perfectly into my second point about why this really doesn't work. So it's supposedly an open bolt direct blowback. That basically means it's a tube specifically one that fires from the open bolt. This is a PPS-43, for example. It's a submachine gun that's basically just a tube with a bolt in the middle. It's got no lockup, it's got no gas system. You just pull the trigger and then the bolt slams forward. The action of the bolt slamming forward picks up a round from the magazine, loads it in the chamber and fires it all at the same time, which the recoil of that pushes the bolt back open, ejects the round and the spring pushes it back forward to keep doing that until your heart's content or you run out of ammo. Your typical open bolt submachine gun is super easy to build. It's very, very simple. And they're really kind of hard to screw up. It's just, there's not a lot to it. It's a tube. I mean, they're easy to build when you're using small pistol rounds. Rifle rounds typically require some sort of lockup. They are far too powerful for direct blowback. Well, kinda. Far too powerful to be practical. You see, the way direct blowback works is that the weight of the bolt itself is heavy enough to be able to keep that round in the chamber while it's firing for just long enough that it doesn't, you know, explode. That's when you have an out of battery. Those aren't good. Now this is when having the right bolt weight is very important. If the bolt is too heavy, the gun doesn't cycle. If the bolt is too light, well, like said, not good. Now you see this hefty little son of a bitch. This is the bolt from that PPS 43. It's basically solid steel and it weighs about a pound and a quarter. Now, one might think there's a lot of mass you could shave off of this thing to make it sleeker and, you know, more lightweight, ergonomic, you know, cool guy cuts. You don't want to lighten the bolt on these things because they weigh this much for a reason. That reason just happens to be not exploding. You see, there's actually a formula to determine how heavy your bolt needs to be, judging by your chamber pressure, like the round that you're using, the barrel length that you're using. It's basic physics. There's an equal and opposite reaction. And if you think you could just get a heftier spring and not worry about bolt weight, you're kind of wrong. Given the way that springs work, the gun still very much relies on the bolt being heavy enough to keep that chamber closed for that initial bit of rearward push against the bolt. TLDR, if you try to cheat, you'll explode. So the question is, what would the bolt weight have to be for this gun to not explode in its current configuration? We actually, we have the math for that. Let's say we had the seven and a half inch barrel and we're giving this thing the best shot possible at not blowing up. Because obviously the less muzzle energy you have, the less rearward force you can have on the bolt, basic physics. Even with the super short barrel, your ideal bolt mass would be 29 pounds. 29 fucking pounds. For context, your bolt alone on this gun would weigh more than a Barrett M107. A whole ass semi-automatic 50 cal plus a scope and maybe some ammo for the weight of just your bolt alone. That's like three and a half AKs of weight. And that's not counting the receiver, the barrel, anything else on this thing, which I imagine is still fucking hefty considering it's a giant ass steel tube. Easily making this sub machine gun weigh like 50 fucking pounds. Over half of which is reciprocating mass as it's firing. So every time a round goes off, more than half of the weight of the gun is rocketing back towards you. How the fuck do you even hold on to that? Now remember that 29 pound bolt number is coming from the assumption they are using the shorter barrel estimate we had. So with the ridiculous sawn off barrel, you're looking at 29 pounds. The longer your barrel, the more powder burn you get, the more back pressure, the more muzzle energy, which means the heavier your bolt has to be. So add a couple inches to that barrel and you're easily looking at the potential for a 50 pound or more bolt just to make this thing function properly. 
So if that math is correct, if this gun fires 50 BMG at a muzzle energy that is even half of what it is out of a Barrett, uh, your bolt weight would push the approximate weight of the gun to be around that of the M2 Ma Deuce. Yeah, that's right. You could have a full-on Browning belt-fed 50 cal for the weight of this piece of shit. Not exactly handheld. Let's go back to that 29 pound bolt number because that is again the most likely scenario for this to even be remotely functional. What does all of that heft buy you as far as muzzle energy? Well, I'm glad you asked. Drum roll, please. Approximately 2,900 foot pounds of energy. Okay, that sounds pretty decent, right? 2,900 foot pounds is no joke. That is until you realize that 50 BMG is supposed to have like 13,000 foot pounds of energy. So congratulations, all of that work and you've taken 50 BMG, the aircraft killer itself, and neutered it to just slightly more powerful than your off-the-shelf 308. My brother in Christ, you have found a way to make a foul weigh 50 pounds. Now keep in mind, this is some back-of-the-envelope math that me and the boys did, and I'm still just a random internet retard. But the key facts of this video and the points about weapon design stay the same. So with all that in mind, what do you guys think? Do you think that this was just a bolt action that was taken out of context by the internet? Or did some crazy son of a bitch in South America actually turn a bunch of leftover 50 BMG into an automatic flashbang launcher? Let me know what your theory is down in the comments. And also let me know if you like videos like this, kind of the more technical breakdowns of maybe some stuff that's floating around on the internet. If this is a little too technical for you and you want more simpler streamlined content, let me know. Or if you want me to dig deeper into the nerdy stuff and go full on gun designer while talking about this shit, I would absolutely be happy to do that too. So just let me know what you guys prefer. Because at the end of the day, I've got a really cool job, but that depends on me making what you guys want to watch. So let me know down in the comments. Anyways, we've got some really cool, edgy content planned for this month, so be sure to subscribe and stick around. And click that notification bell. Join the hashtag AKG Notification Squad. That's all the e-begging I'm going to do for this episode. I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. And as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. In the lot of guns that was seized, a lot of them being handmade. In the lot of guns that were seized, a lot of them being handmade. Fuck. <laughs>